Hello everyone and uh, welcome to something a little bit different for this week. I've actually got a themed week for us. So this is a little sneak peek of what's to come this week. Now, with Halloween coming up and with me getting my pack of papers from Graphic 45 called Charmed, which are all Halloween themed, I thought I'd have a go at making an album, which I've done. And from the leftover pieces, I've been making a bunch of treat holders. So I needed something because I'd had some lint chocolates, which are in one of these. Is this it? Yes. And I started looking online of how to make some treat holders to fit some lint. And I came across the Paper Pixie and she had some wonderful um, little crackers. So this was her original one. And what was great about uh, the first three things I'm gonna show you is, they all came from a four by six piece of paper or smaller, which meant you can make six out of one sheet of your 12 by 12. So I had a couple of full sheets left, which meant I was able to make some of these cool um, treat holders and because it was the um, sort of striped papers, I didn't actually need to embellish much more. It, it sort of had enough in it without having to add more. But then I did use some of the scraps of the patterns and solids on this one. So I've used some of the stickers from the, um, uh, from the collection as well, just to finish that one off because it was this plainer pattern and solid one. But of course I could have used some of my striped ones. I just wanted to do something a little bit different on that one. So I said, the Paper Pixie, she did make this original one and it fitted your lint um, in perfectly. Now, although these are Halloween based and using Charmed, they could also become um, Christmas gifts or birthdays. These little ones are great for making loads of them. As I said, you get six out of one 12 by 12 sheet. Imagine a bowl full of these for people to help themselves, um, trick-or-treaters or Christmas gifts or party um, ideas. So the first day I'm going to show you how to make the Paper Pixie version of the cracker. But then I looked at this and I've added something extra. So I'm going to show you how to make both of these crackers. So the curved one and the cube one. And as I said, both of these hold a lint chocolate in them. And then we're going to move on to show you how to make a pinch top box. Again, it'll fit a lint, but also something a little bit bigger. So maybe for a Rocher or something that sort of size. Or this one is good if you've got some loose, tiny bit like um, Millions or Smarties or M&Ms. That will be good for those. You see, it does go all the way around. Even managed to get the all, uh, no, trick, uh, no tricks or treats fitted in. Um, because that one seals fully. These ones, you can't put loose small millions and smarties and MMs because they will come through the hole. And same with the third one we're going to be showing you, this little lantern box. And again, there is a hole in that one, so you do need your lint, your wrapped bits, and the large thing so it doesn't come out from that hole. And look, there's another of the lantern using the pinch top paper. Again, no tricks, all treats. And again, the pattern does go all the way around, and you even see the inside. So these were all made using a scoreboard and envelope punch board. And then this one, is made purely with the envelope punch board. If you haven't seen the envelope punch board, this is what it, uh, it comes looking like. It was designed to make envelopes, but as you can see, it does a lot more. So this was my original um, fourth project, the belly band box, which had a little belly band and it opened up and then slid out like so. So this one I made in black cardstock 
and had a little belly band coming that way. But then in the video, I actually used the patterns and solids from the Charmed kit. And you can see, I don't know how clear it is, it's actually covered in cobwebs and spider webs. And this time, instead of taking a small belly band, I made a larger one. And again, it doesn't come out well on the camera, but it is full of spider webs and inside full of stars because I used the patterns and solids. So we have these two little tabs which slide in, big enough to put two lint chocolates inside. I close. And I said this time we had the belly band going the other direction with just a little bit of the black showing there, which I think I prefer. And then the last day, for those of you who haven't got the envelope punch board, I made an impossible box. And I'd love to say I did this on purpose, but I'm gonna be honest, it was a fluke and it wasn't even planned. I was just randomly sticking, which you'll see in the video. And it just happened to be that pumpkin ended up having the top of his face actually coming down into the right place. So I was quite chuffed with that, even though it was a fluke. So the impossible box then doesn't use the envelope punch, just your scoreboard and a pencil and ruler. And it is impossible because you're looking at it and you're thinking, how does the lid just slide on and create a closure all in one go? So you lift it up, you drop your chocolates inside, and then you close it. I'm not sure if you can see it in the black, but it closes and seals itself with those four triangles and the sweets just pop out. So that is um, what I'm going to be showing you in my Halloween treat week. So please visit the channel um, every day this week come in and keep an eye out on what's coming each day and have a go at all of them, pick one, give them a try. But if you've got a piece of 12 by 12 left and you're thinking, what am I going to do with it? These are the perfect solution. All these ones here. If you've got some long, thin strips left over, this is perfect. And if you've got some fun patterned papers, it makes it nice and easy to decorate with this here. So I uh, thank you for watching the little quick introduction. Hope you're looking forward to this week. Um, let me know which one you are looking forward to most by writing a comment below or tell me um, what you think of all these projects. I really do like to read your comments. I do try to answer them as well. And uh, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when each of these goes up, you will need to hit that bell button as well. But as long as you've hit that um, subscribe button, it will pop up in your videos to watch a part of your YouTube homepage. So thank you for watching the intro and I can't wait to see you share your versions in Paper Crafting with Paul, which is my Facebook group. If you're not a member yet, you really do want to join because in there you will find um, lots of files and more inspiration and people are sharing what they've done using my tutorials. So if you're not a member, have a look below, you'll find the link as well. Uh, if not, just type in Paper Crafting with Paul in Facebook and the group should pop up. Just a couple of questions to answer to make sure you're not a robot and you'll enjoy. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Yeah.